blocking is when you stretch and shape your finished socks or another project to make the stitches more even and to show patterns to their best advantage. There's debate about whether blocking is actually necessary for socks or not, and if they're just for you or someone close who will want to wear them straight away, then the answer is probably not, but if they're being gifted or photographed, then blocking will help them to look their best, especially with a lace or other pattern that needs to be shown off. If you've been reading the Winnick Mum blog, you'll have seen quite a few posts where I've shown you the sets of blockers that I have. I've got quite a collection now. The good thing about that is I can show you a range of different styles in one photo. I've got perspex, acrylic ones, wooden ones, metal ones, adjustable ones, single size ones. The only sort that I don't have are the kind you can make for yourself, but you can find tutorials on those on YouTube if you want to go and look for them. The single size blockers look like a foot shape and the adjustable blockers have a section that you can move to extend the foot depending on the sock size. I've put a link below to Vicky of D19 Eco Friendly Life who's made most of my blockers for me in case you want to go and have a look at her website. Adjustable blockers can be used for a range of sizes simply by moving and reattaching the extending section to the main blocker and that's what the little holes are for. You can thread a piece of yarn through the holes and that works well but I use a piece of plastic coated wire that came wrapped around an electric cable and that works well for someone who's a bit lazy about threading yarn through the holes when she's got socks of different sizes to block. I poke the end of the wire through the hole and bend it over on the back so that it doesn't stick out. I don't tend to have a problem with it getting stuck in the knitting as long as I make sure that the ends are tucked right in. There are other methods of securing the end. My only pair of wooden blockers that weren't made by Vicky have a band around them and this pair have plastic screws that came with the acrylic blocker and that holds the end into place. Right then, on to blocking the socks. I soak my socks in a washing up bowl of warm water, not too hot. I don't want to boil my socks or have my hands look like lobsters when I take them out of the water. If in doubt, go for cooler than you might usually use and with a small amount of gentle detergent suitable for woolens. About 20 minutes is a good length of time to make sure that all of the fibres are properly wet. I push the socks right under the water so that all of them is getting wet and leave them for a while before rinsing them. I squeeze the excess water out of my socks by folding them up, never wring them, and give them a good squeeze. I don't know if you can see very well in this photo, but the water that the socks came out of is not as clear as it was when the socks went in. Any excess dye, dust, dirt, cat and dog hairs that your socks might have picked up will be left behind and you'll be wearing, or gifting, clean socks. To rinse the socks, I swish them about in fresh clean water to get all of the detergent out. Again, not too hot, always go for cooler water if in doubt. And then squeeze them again by folding them up to get as much water out of them as you can. The socks will still be quite wet, so the best way to get the water out of them now is to wrap them up in a towel. Lay the socks on the towel and roll it up from one end, rolling the socks up with it. I've got a furry helper here, but it's not obligatory, or actually very helpful. Once you've rolled the towel into a sausage, give it another good squeeze to soak up as much of the remaining water as you can. And then it's time to put the socks on the blockers to dry. Because I'm using my adjustable ones, I choose the right size from the sizes marked on the foot and secure the end. Next, it's time to pull the sock carefully over the end of the blocker. You do have to take more time with adjustable blockers because of the two pieces and the sock can get stuck where there's a gap, but it's no more complicated than putting a pair of sheer tights or stockings carefully over your own foot. If you're using solid shaped blockers, it's still best to go slowly and take your time so that you don't pull your sock out of shape. Because the sock is wet, it can feel a bit more difficult to pull it over the heel, but again, Take it slowly and carefully and you shouldn't have a problem. Once you've got the sock onto the block of form, you can pull it into shape. Move it around if the decreases aren't quite in line and if you're using an adjustable blocker, make sure that you pull the sock out of the gap between the two pieces so that the outline is smooth. Repeat with the second sock and leave them to dry. There's usually a hanging hole or hook at the top of the blockers so you can hang them up. Outside is perfect if it's a nice day, or somewhere where it's nice and warm. I tend to dry mine flat, and because we're lucky enough to have an arga, I can leave them on the lids. But as long as you can find somewhere that's not in direct heat, and the socks will dry quickly enough not to smell musty, that should be fine. Once the socks are done, 
you can take them off the blockers and they're all ready for gifting or photographing or whatever you intend to do with them. You can see here that they keep the shape of the blockers and they will do that until the next wash when you can either block them again or just leave them to dry and roll them up in your sock drawer. As a side note, I never ball my hand-knit socks up inside each other as I would with bought socks so that the cuff doesn't stretch. I put mine one on top of the other and then fold them before putting them away. And finally, just to remind you of the difference between blocked and unblocked socks, here are mine before they were washed and dried. And you can also see why I really shouldn't take photos on different days as the light changes significantly. The pattern is called Zoom and you can find it in the West Yorkshire Spinner's Happy Feet pattern book. I'll put the link to the blog post about this pattern and the others in the book below. If you're gifting socks, I always think it's worth taking the time to block them to show off your knitting. Too many people are upset that their knitting skills seem to be undervalued or taken for granted, but this is a good and easy way to make your knitting look very professional and encourage people to see us for the sock knitting superstars that we know we are.